so they're phasing a bit, but if we drop one by a whole octave, What's up guys, it's Unders and we are having a look through the new Isotope Nectar 3 plugin in detail. In this video, we're just going to be looking through the pitch modulation section and the pitch correction and how we can use that and a couple of the features within it. So we're just going to take all processing off of the vocal channel in this mix here and we're just going to have Nectar and just the pitch processing in there. So our track is this with a naked vocal. And our naked vocal is this. Still being sent to my reverb, but we are going to deal with that. I'm not going to undo my whole mix. So how the pitch system works. If we look on the left hand side, we've got a vocal register. We've got this low, mid and high. Now you're generally going to find female vocals are going to be mid and high. Um, and someone with like a male voice, more of a baritone tone, you might use the low. What this does is it basically has a look at the content of the vocal or whatever's going into it really. And it's looking for those fundamentals and where it's going to repitch them to. So, uh, a female vocal is generally going to be in like the mid high range, depending what key they're singing in. So we're going to keep it on mid for the minute and see how it detects up there. Just below that, we've got scale. So if you know the key that you want to go to, that's really, really good. And you can basically just choose your key by selecting the notes that you actually want it to track to. So if there's only a couple of notes that a vocal should be hitting and you want to restrict it to those and not a key, you can also do that. We're just going to restrict it to a key for the moment. I think from memory, this tracks in A sharp minor. So what we'll do, we'll just choose our key. We've got our A sharp. Instead of chromatic, we'll swap you over to minor. We've then got this uh, semitone meter next to it, and it's going to be basically a shift in pitch on that key. So we can actually shift it down an octave. So if we were to drop it by 12, you can get this effect. I should have seen it coming. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. Equally, you can chipmunk it. But we're going to leave it as if it's going to correct it rather than being creative. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. Cool. So once we've enabled the correction just here, and we've got that rocking and rolling. We've got a couple of settings that we need to use. So strength is sort of how hard it's going to accurately repitch that. So a vocal can move uh, within the note. Like within a note, there's lots of different frequency areas. Um, the actual note is one specific frequency bang in the middle. And they're all mathematically relevant to one another. This is basically how strong is it going to get it to that absolute perfect frequency and hold it there. Or is it just going to get it somewhere in the ballpark so it's near, which is more to what a natural vocal would be. And then this is the speed of how quickly it's going to get there. So depending on your singer, for example, uh, a much longer millisecond might help you out. Or if it's, if it's lots of little phrases that move in note, you need to be quite quick on that and getting each one into the right note. And we've then got the formant shift. So the formant's like your, your fundamental, your key frequency of the sound. You can shift that up and down like we did in the scale semitones. You can blend the two together to get some pretty crazy effects or just to uh, adjust the formant character of the vocal itself. So just have a quick listen to what we can do. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. I should have started running. Maybe it would be fine. I fought him for the same trick like a dozen times. I thought that we could make it, but we didn't shine. You came to like a fool. Yeah, you played the others. Cool. So that is essentially what you can do with the pitch correction. You can use it nice and subtly just to correct the pitch, or you can get quite creative with it and make different vocals and sounds with it. Just for a real quick example, if I duplicate the vocal track here, and we have two runs of it, we've now got two runs of it. 
I should have seen it coming. So they're phasing a bit, but if we drop one by a whole octave. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the signs. If you really want to get even more creative, we can have a third one. And we've got that pitch down. And now we're going to shift the foreman back up by, I say, three semitones. So it's going to be nine semitones down uh, in the scale shift, but then pushed up by three semitones. I should have seen it coming. I should have read the sign. And you can really beef up that vocal really quickly. And that's just using the pitch control in Nectar. We've got all of the other plugins that come inside it to cover yet. So the compressor, the DS, the delay, etc. So stay tuned for those videos and I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.